What's good people? How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, please do subscribe down below, smash the like button, hit the bell. Those things help out a lot. YouTube's not been notifying people when we go live or when we upload our videos, so smash the bell so that you get notified. Anyway, in today's episode, guys, we got a dope one for you guys. As always, it's all about how to fix and prevent stretching in the seeds. If you have had issues with stretching of your seeds, this video is all for you. Now, long stretchy stems are one of the most common problems that growers face during the seedling stage. Luckily, there are few simple ways that you can prevent and fix stretching in seedlings. So we're going to run through all those today. Before we get into that guys, just a reminder, the Seed Club membership is still open. If you haven't gotten an email from us, check your junk email because we send emails out to everyone and we're still giving away free testers with every purchase of merch from our website. So hit up the website, cop some merch and get some testers guys, support the channel. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much. And if you need to cop some grow equipment, Mars Hydro discount code will save you some cash. So check the links in the description below and save yourself a few bucks. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's episode. Yes, guys. So like I said, long stretchy stems are one of the most common problems that beginner growers face during the seedling stage. But you can fix the stretching in those seedlings and prevent it from ever happening again. So just like baby humans, seedlings are super fragile and need plenty of love and tender care to flourish. Fortunately, many growers run into the same issue during the early stages of their plants' lives. Their seedlings grow long and stretchy and weak stems and like they topple over and like it's just not fun. Now, and this in turn can lead to a host of other issues and they can put your crop at risk of delivering subpar results. Now we're going to run through a few tips that you can use to avoid this happening because it's a big one. Now first off you just need to understand the seedling phase. Seedlings are like little genetic capsule time bombs. I actually read that somewhere and it stuck with me. What this basically means is that they have one job and only have one chance to pull it off. They are pre-programmed to survive and a seed self contains absolutely everything that a future plant needs to get started. Once it's activated with moisture and darkness it'll trigger germination and once that get going there's no no turning back and once that gets going there's no turning back we did a dope video on germination and seedlings check it out on our channel there's loads of pictures and videos on there all about it now a seedling doesn't need any food for the first few days of its life from genetics it's already backpacking on the essential nutrients needed to embrace the miracle of life seedlings actually have like a little reserve to help them establish themselves in their growing environment so like in optimal conditions the seed shell or husk will crack open and a taproot will pop out taproot immediately digs down in search of like a water lifeline. So you'll see a sprout rise from under the soil and spread out its first baby leaves. These are called cotyledons. And then you'll start noticing the first set of true leaves form after that. Now leaves have an equally important job as the taproot, but they are in search of another food source, the light. Now quite literally, a plant uses light to digest what it brings up from the soil. Always keep that in mind. Now for a whole video on germination and how to get it right, definitely check out those videos that I talked about because we go over everything. Now to grow healthy seeds, seedlings, it's important to give them the right amount of light and the right type of light as soon as they break out of their shell. Seedlings like to receive around 16 hours of light a day, 16 to 18. A lot of people may sell on the 18, but you can get away with the 16. We always suggest using a less strong or less powerful light. Like you can literally get away with a 12 watt CFL bulb for one or two seedlings. And let me tell you why. Seedlings are very small and have very few leaves. Total surface area available to absorb light is very small. So in essence, that 200 watt bulb that you're using will be radiating over a large surface area but the seedling can only use a minute fraction of it so that CFL bulb that's positioned right over the plant on the other hand will be able to give most of its 20 watts to it directly so always think about that seedlings are super small super small now just a word on spectrum growing your seedlings under lights with a high percentage of red may cause them to stretch blue light on the other hand helps to keep the internodal spacing minimum and encourages plants to grow at a nice stocky growth from the get-go now you may be wondering what the hell causes abnormal stretching in the first place? Well, there are a few different things. Abnormal stretching in the seedling phase is almost always a sign of stress. By far, it's the most common situation that causes seedlings to stretch and topple over. The main one is light deprivation. In the same way that the tap roots dig for nutrients and water, the top part of the plant will stretch vigorously if it's not receiving enough light. It's a survival mechanism in which a plant uses up all its stored energy to rise above the competing flora. In the case of indoor growing, there's no competition, but the seedling will perceive it this 
this way. So for instance, if you're leaving the pot under a windowsill in the shade, this will likely trigger this behavior. Things can get even more dramatic under an artificial light. Now this may seem a bit confusing for indoor growers as they may think that they are providing more than enough light to their plants. But as a rule of thumb, even if you have a huge light, you can lift the seedlings higher up and dim down the light so it gets more of that light. If the light is super high up and it's super bright, the seedlings may not be able to use all of that light. So it may come down as well to positioning of the seedlings under your light. Now other than light deprivation, there are a few other factors that may cause your seedlings to stretch. And one of those is poor nutrient content in the soil. More precisely, seedlings benefit from nitrogen. So you want to make sure that you mix a super soil in there which has some nitrogen to get them started from the get-go and push them through that veg state. You can always amend before you go into flower or top dress or feed however you feed. So that's just something to consider. Now another cause of leggy seedlings is heat. While seedlings like warm and humid conditions, too much heat can cause a plant's leaves to grow slower than its stem, resulting in tall and stretchy growth. To promote healthy seedling growth, we recommend keeping the temperatures in your grow room or your dome at around 19 to 20 degrees Celsius during the day, and maybe you can let it go down to 13 degrees around there at night, but it's always better to keep it slightly warmer, slightly more humid, not too hot and not too humid to get rot and mold. Now seedlings can stretch due to light deprivation, or they can stretch if they're receiving too much light per day. Seedlings need to rest, just like everyone. Humans need to rest, plants need to rest, seedlings need to rest. Now while some growers opt to keep their seedlings under 24 hours of light a day, we recommend sticking to the 16 or 18 hour mark. Seedlings are fragile and by giving them too much light, it can cause stress and stretching. Remember those dark hours are just as important for your young plants to develop healthy roots and respire. Now if your seedlings are falling over and they're toppling everywhere like you just don't even know what to do, there are a few things that you can actually do in that situation. Because stretchy seedlings can be a pain to handle and transplant. Their stems can be super fragile and once they start vegging, their foliage can be off-center due to that weird stretch that they underwent in seedlings. It's pretty crazy. Now to avoid a lot of the issues that come with stretching, you can start off seeds in a solo cup and not fill the cup all the way up. So fill the cup just about halfway and once those seedlings do start to stretch a bit, you can always add a bit more soil around the stalk. So that's a really great idea that I've used. If you can use that technique, then you can always grab a paper clip and bend it into a shape that gives the stem support. Check out our Instagram because we've posted a lot about that. The main idea is that you want to have some support for the stalk of the seedlings to avoid it from plopping over. So you want to bend a paper clip into a shape pretty much like this and that will provide support for the seedling. You plop it into the soil, that sort of helps to hold up the stalk and the stem. Foolproof methods guys, with things that you have at home and you can just help yourself out without spending any cash. Now there's also another process known as thinning. Only the strong survive and the weak shall perish. So basically thinning is a common agricultural technique that's often forgotten about amongst our type of growers. As the name suggests, it's all about reducing the competition among your plants by thinning out the population. Plants grow very quickly and will naturally compete with one another for light, space, and nutrients. So while you may have been taught to think that more plants translates to bigger, better harvest, that may not always be the case. In fact, many experienced growers opt to cull their weakest seedlings and only grow those plants that show the healthiest growth. This way, they focus their efforts on the plants that are most likely to produce the best flowers. I've actually pulled a few seedlings that showed like some poor growth recently just because I didn't want to deal with it. Thinning also helps growers maintain an even canopy across their grow room, which makes better use of a limited amount of light and space. Finally, thinning can help you avoid pests and other plagues as you'll be less likely to end up with a crowded grow space. Now to thin your plants, simply keep a close eye on your seedlings throughout the first one or two weeks of their life and only keep those specimens that show the healthiest and fastest growth. Simple, strong shall survive, the weak shall perish told you before. Now if you got any tips you've used to help the stretchy seedlings and stuff like that then drop a comment down below it may help someone else out. Thanks for tuning in guys smash the like button hit the bell those things help out a ton and um yeah yeah that that that's about it for today. Check out this video right here and this video right here and we'll see you on the next one. Peace fam.